Hi again, I want to talk to you today about why we are the righteousness of God. Now, it's important for Christians to understand this because the Bible says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Well, why is there no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus? The reason is we have been given the righteousness of God. It's a gift. The Bible says it's a gift and that it belongs to us. Let's start off with 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. So God made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin, but he became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So how were we made the righteousness of God? in Christ, in Jesus Christ. That's how we are made the righteousness of God in him. Now, does it say here that we earn the righteousness of God? Does it say that we might earn the righteousness of God in him? No, it says that we might be made, made the righteousness of God in him. In him? And who's that? In Jesus Christ. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that's Jesus Christ, that in him, in him, we are made, not, not earned, we don't earn the righteousness of God, we are made the righteousness of God in Christ. Well, how did that happen? And do we have any other witnesses of this? Yes, we do. We look at Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, that's Adam. And this, this all is talking about how through Adam uh, sin came to the world. For if by one man's offense, that's Adam, death reigned by one man, Adam, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Well, hold on. By one Jesus Christ again. And what do they get? A gift of righteousness. If we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says in verse 30, it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us. So who is this? Is Jesus Christ who Jesus Christ has become for us wisdom from God that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. So we know Christ became our redemption. We know that. But did you know that he also became our righteousness and our holiness? Jesus Christ, you are in Christ Jesus. Jesus has become for us, for us, wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Christ has become that for us. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. Once again, you don't want to be thinking about sin. You don't want to be conscious of sin. That's what the law does. The law brings consciousness of sin. But now a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known. A righteousness. A righteousness that is from God and it's apart from law, and it has been made known to which the law and the prophets testified. The law and the prophets told us about the righteousness that would come through the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Now, this is a righteousness that is from God, and this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to some who believe. Is that what it says? Does it come to some who believe? Oh, wait, it comes, this righteousness comes to those who act good. They act good enough. They do enough good, good deeds. Is that what it says? No, this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. All, 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 all who believe. Not some who believe, all who believe. There is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. All. Everyone. I don't care how good you think you are. You're not good enough of your own righteousness. Your own righteousness is not good enough. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his, what? His grace. His unmerited favor. Favor that we do not deserve. We are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came 
by Christ Jesus. What's this talking about? This is the righteousness from God that comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all, to all who believe, not some who believe, to all who believe. So this righteousness that's from God, this is a gift. We saw in Romans 5, 17 that it's a gift from God. It's a gift of righteousness, and it comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. It's righteousness. Righteousness is right standing with God. We also have holiness. We saw in, in 1 Corinthians 1.30, we saw we, have, we also have holiness. What's holiness? It's being set apart. We were set apart by God. It's not anything we did. You didn't deserve holiness. You don't somehow earn holiness. No, you were set apart by God. He's become for us holiness and righteousness and sanctification. So this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. That's why it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Well, why is that true? The reason that's true is all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and there's no difference between anyone. We just read that in Romans 3. There's no difference between anyone. All have screwed up. Everyone screwed up. I don't care how good you think you are. Everyone is screwed up, and all of us are given righteousness as a gift. It's a gift. You don't deserve it, and you got it anyways because God loves you. Once again, how, how are we saved? Jesus told us how we're saved. In John chapter 3, Jesus said in verse 3, he, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Born again. This is how you see the kingdom of God. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. And the righteousness that comes from God is by faith in Jesus Christ. That's the righteousness that, that comes from God that allows us to see the kingdom of God. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. In other words, being born again brings this righteousness upon us. We know that Titus 3, 5 told us that he saved us not because of the righteous things we've done, but because of his mercy. God saved us because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This renewal was not done by you or any man. It was not done by your works. It wasn't done by water. It wasn't water baptism that saved you. It wasn't anything outward that saved you. He saved us through the washing of rebirth, just like Jesus said, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. And this is the washing of rebirth, being born again. Now, what does that cause to happen? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 tells us what happens when you get saved. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if he gets saved, if he's in Christ, he is a new creation. He's a new creation. The old is gone completely and the new has come. And we know this is the spirit man. This new creation is replacing the old one. The old is gone completely and the new has come. Right after that, in chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, in verse 21, right after verse 17, in verse 21, it says, For he has made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin, and he became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Made, not earned. You didn't earn it. You were made the righteousness of God in him. That's why it tells us, verse 17, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is. He is a new creature. He didn't make himself a new creature. No, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has passed away. When did this new creation happen? When did this, this regeneration, this new creature happen that replaced the old one? When did this happen? Titus 3, 5. He saved us. By the washing of regeneration, that's rebirth, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. If we look at the NIV, it makes it a little more clear. It says, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So this is the new creation. It's the rebirth. When does this happen? When he saved us. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So we see it. salvation is when the new birth happened, and that new birth is what gave us the righteousness of God. It just tells us outright in 2 Corinthians 5 that that's when we get the righteousness of God. But just to make it more clear, let's look back at John chapter 5 and verse 26. 
where it tells us, for as the Father has life in himself, and this word life is the word zoe, this is the, uh, a word for life that is zoe, the life of God, because the Father has this life. So this is not just a regular word life, general life, like living. No, this is a particular type of life. For as the Father is life in himself, so this is the life of God, because God has this kind of life. So zoe is a particular kind of life that God the Father has. So the Father has Zoe, life in himself. And so he has given the Son, Jesus Christ, to have, what is that? Zoe, Zoe in himself. So God the Father has this Zoe in himself that makes it the life of God because God the Father has it. And it's not talking about general life. This is a particular word for life. It's the word Zoe, the life of God, because God has it. God has this kind of life in himself. And he gave it to Jesus Christ, his son, to have in himself. So this Zoe is the life of God. And wouldn't you know, two chapters earlier in John chapter 3, in verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have, guess what? Zoe. That's life. That's the life of God. This isn't just any word for life. This is Zoe. This is the life of God. This is what we received when we got saved. For God so loved the world. This is how much he loved the world. Is that he gave us Zoe. He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should have Zoe. So who gets this Zoe, the life of God, in their spirit? Believe in him and you get Zoe. That's how you get Zoe. And where is this Zoe? Where does it exist? Where is this life of God? Where is it? Earlier in the same chapter, Jesus tells us. He says in verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily I say to you, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So that's talking about being born again. You have to be born of God by the washing of rebirth. The washing, born of water, that's spiritual water. Because remember, Jesus said that salvation is like springs of water flowing out of your spirit. And he tells us that that's talking about the Holy Spirit tells us in John chapter 7 that that is talking about the Holy Spirit. So except a man be born of water and the Spirit, the washing of rebirth is what that's saying, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In other words, that's how you enter the kingdom of God is by being born again. And then it says that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So where are you born again? In your spirit. Remember, man is made up of spirit, soul, and body. Where are you born again? It's in your spirit where you're born again. It tells us, I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here we see that man is made up of spirit, soul, and body. I pray your whole, in other words, your whole being, your spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. So this is the parts of your being. You have a spirit, a soul, and a body. And what is born again? Well, Jesus told us in John chapter 3 exactly what is born again. John chapter 3, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So when you're born again, that's done in the spirit realm, and that's a complete rebirth. It tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is. He is a new creature. The old things are passed away. They're not there anymore. They're passed away. When something's passed away, it's not there anymore. It's gone. It's passed away. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. Where is that? Where's this new creature? Where, is that, where does that new creature exist? Jesus told us, John chapter 3, that which is born of spirit is spirit. So the spirit is where you're born again. The spirit man is what is born again. You receive the, the righteousness of God in your spirit because we know that's where you're, you receive the righteousness of God that is talked about in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Radford right talks about being a new creature in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things become new. It says, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made. The righteousness of God. Now, the only time you ever made anything is by is when you're born again. That's the only time you're ever forced into anything is after you receive Jesus Christ, something is forced upon you, and that's the new birth. He, we are made something. And what is that? 
the righteousness of God in him. We're made. We're not asked to be the righteousness of God. We're not told that we should be the righteousness of God. No, we are made the righteousness of God in Christ. In him we are made, 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 made the righteousness of God. Once again, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life to the one man, Jesus Christ? Well, there's only one possible way this gift of righteousness could have come upon us. It's a gift. It's a gift. It wasn't earned. Now, we're supposed to do something about our soul. We're, we have to renew our minds with the word of God. We have to receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save our soul. But the spirit is a different story. The gift of righteousness could only have come upon us at the new birth. That's the only time when the old is passed away entirely in one area of your being. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is. He is a new creation. It happens in you. Jesus said you must be born again. He is. If any man is in Christ... How are you in Christ? When you believe in Jesus Christ, the righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is, not becomes, he is a new creation. The old is gone. It's gone completely. It's not there anymore. The only place that could happen is in your spirit. So in your spirit, you are the righteousness of God. And that is a deposit guaranteeing your inheritance. If we look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14, it says, Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Now, when did the Holy Spirit come to live in you? Titus 3, 5, we're saved by the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So the regeneration, the rebirth happens by the Holy Spirit. So we're supposed to guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. And we're supposed to guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. In other words, the Holy Spirit lives in you, but your own spirit is the good deposit. The good deposit is done in your spirit. The new creation you receive, the righteousness of God you receive, the nature of God, the Zoe, the life of God you receive is the good deposit that was entrusted to you. And you're supposed to guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the good deposit is not the Holy Spirit itself. No, the good deposit is something that the Holy Spirit helps you guard. You guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit. You guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. And that is the new birth, the righteousness of God. That is a gift. We saw that as a gift, the gift of righteousness that was given to us by God. According to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration, which is rebirth and renewal of the Holy Ghost. That was done by the Holy Ghost. That was not done by us. We don't, re we don't get this somehow by our own actions, by our own deserving of it. This was given to us. Once again, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why is that? Why is there no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus? Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Well, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, what is that? That's the new spirit that was given to you that came by Christ Jesus. How are we the righteousness of God? We've become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21 so the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that's the law that we abide by now. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that's the new birth. That's the, the righteousness given to us at the new birth. That makes us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. How did he do that? He gave us a new spirit. The nature of God is in us. We want to do what's right. So he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Why is that? Because we are born again. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. The NIV says this a little better. It says, in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully 
met in us. Well, how can the righteous requirements of the law be fully met in us? Because we are born again. The law was powerless to do that, to make us born again, to, to set us free from sin. But through the Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life, the life of God, the Zoe of God, that's what sets you free from the law of sin and death. Down in verse 13, it says, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. In other words, if you don't get born again, you'll die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. How? Through the Spirit. Get born again. How? What happens when you get born again? You mortify the deeds of the body. What happens to us? The righteousness of God is fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Why is that? Because we're born again. Verse 8 says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Those that are in the flesh, they're not born again. They haven't received the new spirit from God. They cannot please God. But you, he's talking to believers here. This is written to the Romans. This is Paul writing to Christians. And he says in general to all the believers in Rome, he says, You are not in the flesh. So people say, oh, you know, Christians that are in the flesh, you know, they're, they're evil. No, no. Christians are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and there's no difference. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And you, talking to all Christians, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Why? If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. How does the Spirit of God dwell in you? Titus 3, 5, we're saved by the washing of rebirth, regeneration, and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God dwells in us. What does it do? It regenerates us. So if you are not in the flesh, and it doesn't say you might not be in the flesh. It doesn't say that some of you are not in the flesh. It says to all the Romans, all the believers in Rome, he says, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, what's the condition? If the Spirit of God dwells in you. Does the Spirit of God dwell in every believer? Yes, it does. Titus 3, 5. We're saved by the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Ghost. That's how we're saved. And then he says in the very next sentence, Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. In other words, every Christian has the Spirit of Christ in them. The Holy Spirit is inside every believer. And if he, someone doesn't have the Holy Spirit in him, in him, he's not a Christian. He's none of his. He doesn't belong to God if he's not a Christian. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life. Why? Because of righteousness. Well, how on earth did we get that righteousness? It's a gift from God. The gift of righteousness that comes from God the Father through Jesus Christ. It's a gift. The Bible says it's a gift. So if Christ be in you, the body is dead. Not might be, not partially dead. No, it is dead because of sin. The body is not part of the equation anymore. It's dead because of sin. But the spirit where you've been given the life of God, where you're born again, that spirit is life because of righteousness. In him we become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5 21. Verse 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, does the Holy Spirit dwell in you? Yes. Yes. Titus 3 5 tells us it does. So if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. So here he tells us that his spirit dwells in us. He's talking to all the believers in Rome. And he says, here he says that if that spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead, if that dwells in you, which it does in every believer, he just got through saying that, then he that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken or give life to your mortal bodies by his spirit that lives in you. And you can look at this two different ways. First of all, in, in the end, at the rapture, life will be given to our mortal bodies when we're raptured and we'll be given eternal bodies. So he'll quicken our mortal bodies by his spirit at the rapture. People who are changed at the rapture, that's what happens. They're given life. They're changed. We see in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that when the rapture happens, that we are changed. And that's a quickening. 
given life to our mortal bodies. But also you can look at this another way. That Holy Spirit, the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you already. It already dwells in you. And He's the one who's going to quicken your mortal body at the rapture by His Spirit that dwells in you. Well, hold on a second. That life is in you already. Because He that raised Jesus from the dead, He shall in the future quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwells in you. It already dwells in you. So you can receive life in your mortal body that is physical healing by his spirit that dwells in you as well. So you can look at that two different ways. It's really talking about the rapture. He, he will quicken our mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in us. Yes, that's true. At the rapture, that will happen. But also you can look at that as healing as well because that spirit already dwells in you. It dwells in you already. So notice verse 13 again. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. In other words, if you don't get born again, you're going to die. That's spiritual death it's talking about. So you shall die spiritually. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Through what? Through the Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do when he comes into you? He makes you born again. He makes you new creation. He gives you the righteousness of God. And that mortifies the deeds of the body. Because the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us who live after the Spirit. How do we live after the Spirit? By being born again. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, in other words, we cannot earn our own salvation. The law was not going to ever give us salvation because no one could live up to it. What it could not do, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and He, He condemned sin in the flesh. Jesus did it. It wasn't done by us. You didn't condemn sin in your own flesh. No, Jesus did that. When you're born again, the righteousness of God is in you. And it's your job to hold fast your confession and walk in the righteousness of God because you have the desire to do what's right. The nature of God is in you. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 tells us, but the fruit of the Spirit is... Now hold on a second. What can he ta be talking about here? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things there is no law. And they that our Christs have crucified the flesh with its affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Now, what is he talking about? This is the Spirit, walking the Spirit right here. The fruit of the Spirit is, and then it tells us what our new born-again Spirit is like. It doesn't say the soul. You notice that? It doesn't say the soul. It doesn't say that the fruit of your own actions or the fruit of the flesh. It doesn't say any of that. It says, no, the works of the flesh are described before that. And they're all these evil things. But then the fruits of the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the, the new spirit we get when we're born again has the nature of God in us. The life of God was given to us when we got born again. John 3, 16 told us, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have Zoe. And that Zoe in John 5, 26 is the life of God that God gave to Jesus and Jesus gave to us. And the fruit of the Spirit, so that Spirit is the born-again Spirit that we received, is, that's what this is what it is. It's love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. That is what our new Spirit is like. This is reiterated to us in Ephesians chapter 4. It says in verse 22 that we should put off concerning our former conversation, the old man. In other words, any man being Christ is a new creation. The old is gone. The old man, it's gone. It's gone. But in your mind, you still have the same mind, the same soul. Remember, you're made up of spirit, soul, and body. You have the same soul after you got saved as you had before you got saved. So our minds need to be renewed. That's why the Bible says renew your mind. Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. And here he says, put off that former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts. Okay, so this is the old man. This is the old man that was is no longer there. The spirit, the old spirit you had. The former conversation, the old man. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. We're supposed to put it off in our minds. Because he's talking about renewing the, your mind, your mind, mind, mind. So he says, put off concerning the former conversation, that old spirit, the old man, which is corrupt. Why did we become new creations in Christ Jesus? Because the old man was corrupt. It was corrupt. 
and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In other words, renew your mind. This is attitude here. Spirit is attitude. Be renewed in the attitude of your mind. So once again, just like Romans 12 told us, just like James 1 told us, receive with meekness engrafted word. Renew your mind. And that you put on the new man. The new man. Well, hold on. What's the new man? The new man is the spirit that you receive from God. We saw that that's the spirit, that you receive a new spirit when you're born again. That spirit has the nature of God. We saw we received the Zoe, the life of God. And there's only one way we could have received that. So that's through the spirit. Jesus said that the new birth is done in the spirit in John chapter 3. He said that's where it's done. It's in the spirit. So you got to put on that new man, which is already there in your spirit, which after God is, is the new man. That new man inside you, that new man, new creation in Christ Jesus, which after God is, not might be, not maybe, is created in what? Righteousness and true holiness. So the new man that you receive from God, that is after God created. It's created in righteousness and true holiness. That's how it's created to be. So it's in righteousness. And true holiness. Notice that holiness is also something we receive. That new spirit has holiness. You're set apart by God. Holiness is being set apart. We are set apart by God when we're born again. And we are created in righteousness and true holiness. That new man, the new man which we receive from God when we were born again, it was created in righteousness and true holiness. That's how it was created. And in 1 Peter chapter 3, We see that the hidden man of the heart, in verse 4 here, is not corruptible. It says, let that beauty be, talking to women winning over their husbands, born-again Christian women winning over their husbands, it says, let let your beauty be in the hidden man of the heart. That's the spirit. The hidden man, is that's your spirit. That's your new man that's created after God in true righteousness and holiness. And it's of the heart. Remember, the heart is your spirit and your soul. I explained that a few weeks ago in my message, the spirit, the soul, and the heart. And the hidden man of the heart is the spirit. And it is not corruptible. So the hidden man is the spirit. It's of the heart, which is the spirit and the soul. The heart is the spirit and the soul. So the hidden man is of the heart, and it is not corruptible. The spirit is not corruptible. It's created after God in true righteousness and holiness. And that's why 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 can tell us with confidence, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Made, made, made. You were not earning this righteousness. You were not in the process of earning it. You're not trying to get it somehow. You have been made the righteousness of God in him. Romans 5, 17. The gift of righteousness. Righteousness is a gift. It's a gift that was given to you when you were born again. When did it come to you? Titus 3, 5. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Ghost. That renewal is of the Holy Ghost. That's how he saved us, is by the new birth. What did we receive when we got saved? Romans chapter 3. Now a righteousness of God without the law is manifested. And this righteousness of God, which is by faith of Christ Jesus upon all them that believe. So this, even the righteousness of God, this righteousness of God is by faith in Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. Whoever believes in Jesus Christ, for there is no difference for all have sinned. All, 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 all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So at the new birth is when you receive the righteousness of God. That's when you received the new birth. And the new birth was when you received the new spirit. So the new spirit is where you have that righteousness, which Ephesians tells us in chapter 4, that new man is created after God in true righteousness and holiness. 
we need to renew our minds like Romans chapter 12 says in verse 2, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because you've got the same mind, the same soul as you had before you were born again. That doesn't change. you got the same soul. You need to renew your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and pleasing will of God. In other words, you're not going to know what the will of God is without renewing your mind. You're not going to know the truth without renewing your mind. James chapter 1, verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls or renew your mind. Renewing your mind, saving your soul, same difference. Your soul it has your mind in it. Your mind and your emotions are in your soul. You want to save your mind and your emotions? Well, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to do that. It's able to save your mind and your emotions. Just like Romans 12, 2 told us, renew our minds. We need to renew our minds so we can know what the will of God is. And why is that? It says in verse 23, For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, if he's not a doer of the word, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholds himself and goes his way and forgets what manner of man he was. He forgets what manner of man he was. He looked at himself. Okay, notice that he looked himself in a glass. He beheld his natural face in a glass. This is someone who hears the word and they find out, in other words, that they're a new creation in Christ Jesus. And what happens if he's not a doer of the word? If he's not a doer of the word, then he's like a new man who looks and sees that new creation in Christ Jesus, beholds himself, and then goes his way and forgets what manner of man he was. In other words, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus and you forget all about how you're a new creation in Christ Jesus and you start living by circumstances because you're not, your mind is not renewed. But whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty, this is not the law of Moses, this is the law of freedom. Liberty, freedom, the law of freedom in Christ Jesus. What is the law we live by? Remember, Romans told us in chapter 8, we live by the law of freedom in Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Whosoever looks into the perfect law of freedom and continues in that freedom, in that law of freedom, he's not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. You want to be blessed? Find out what manner of man you are. You are created after God in true righteousness and holiness. Start to reflect that man. Start to be that man. Renew your mind with the word of God so you can put off the old man and put on the new man, which is already created after God in true righteousness and holiness. Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Be reminded of what man you are, what the man you are now. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Remember John chapter 3 and verse 18. He that believes on him is not condemned. Now, that's just, that's pretty general, isn't it? He that believes in Jesus is not condemned. That's, that's John telling us this in John chapter 3. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Paul told us the same thing in Romans chapter 8. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. Because we live not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We have been born again. We are children of God. He that believes on him is born again, in other words, lives after the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son, the only begotten son of God, Jesus Christ. He that does not believe, he that believes not, is condemned because, the, in other words, the reason someone that is, is condemned is because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Well, what's the difference? If you do have not believed, he that has not believed is condemned already because he's not born again. That falls perfectly in line with Je what John told us earlier. Jesus told us, actually. He said, Jesus told us in the same chapter earlier in verse 3, Jesus said, Verily I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again. 
We're saved by the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Once again, how are you saved? Romans chapter 10, verse 9 tells us plainly how you're saved. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved, period, the end. It doesn't say you might be saved. It says you shall be saved. And the reason for that is for, the reason that's true, is with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So salvation is not done by works. It's not done by anything you did. You don't earn righteousness. Righteousness is a gift. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And we didn't receive it by earning it. John chapter 3, Jesus said, Verily I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What's the kingdom of God? Jesus told us himself in Luke chapter 17, verse 20. He said, when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus answered and said to them, the kingdom of God comes not with your observation, neither will people say, here it is or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So the kingdom of God is in you when you're born again. If you're born again, you see the kingdom of God. A man cannot see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. The kingdom of God is within you. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Remember, Jesus is the king of the kingdom of God. And we were already translated. He has. He's writing to Christians here. Paul's writing to the Christians in Colossae and he says, you have been translated. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. The kingdom of God is within you. How do you enter the kingdom of God? Jesus said, by being born again. How are you born again? By being saved. Titus 3, 5, not by the righteousness we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of rebirth, regeneration and renewal of the Holy Ghost. He saved us, saved us by that rebirth. That's how we got saved. That's what happened when you confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him for the dead. The direct result of that is righteousness, the righteousness from God. Romans chapter 3, now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested and the righteousness of God is by faith in Jesus Christ to all them that believe. Not some who believe, all who believe, for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So if you think somehow that you're not holy enough or you're not righteous enough or you haven't done enough good deeds, well, guess what? You're saved because of the righteousness that was given to you as a gift. We're created after God in true righteousness and holiness. That new spirit we have, according to the Bible, is created after God in true righteousness and holiness. In other words, it has righteousness and holiness in it. In other words, you want to do what's right. The nature of God is in you. Remember what John 5, 26 told us, the life of God, the Zoe, the life of God, that God gave to Jesus Christ. That's what we receive when we're born again. And that has to be in the spirit because what, what happens? We're born again in the spirit realm. We become a new creation. That new creation is in the spirit. Jesus says that the spirit gives birth to spirit and you must be born again. So the spirit is where you receive the new creation. That is where it happens is in the spirit. So you receive the nature of God in your spirit. You want to do what's right. That's why it drives you crazy if you do something wrong. If you're a Christian, it's going to be on your conscience if you do something wrong. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus and you have the righteousness of God. Whether anyone believes it or not, whether anyone tells you that or not, you have the righteousness of God in you. So there is no condemnation for you who are in Christ Jesus. It's in our nature to want to do what's right. And when we screw up, we know it. We know it because the law is written on our hearts. And that's another message entirely. But the law is written on your heart when you're born again. The law of God, which is love your neighbor as yourself, is written on your heart. You want to do what's right. You want to love people. You want to care about people. That's because it's in your nature. You are created after God in true righteousness and holiness. You have the righteousness of God. So that's my message for today. Thanks for watching.